I want you to take a moment and think of your favorite local spot, whether that's a bakery or a coffee shop or a little grocery store. These places are quintessentially human. They have a certain charm, a certain je ne sais quoi that you, that you just love about them that makes them special. Now, this podcast is about the humanity around AI and how it's changing and transforming. And that got me thinking, how is artificial intelligence going to have impact on these sorts of businesses that I know I love and you probably do too? In this episode, I reached out to James Chambers, CTO and lead taste tester for one of those kinds of small businesses. He and his wife founded Shea Angela, a ca cafe, bakery out of Brandon, Manitoba, Canada. James and I talk a lot about how AI can have impact on small businesses like his, how he uses it inside the wins and the losses he's felt, along with a lot of other great stuff. So sit back, grab that snack, and strap yourself in for a great episode. I'm your host, David West, and welcome to Remember the Human. Hey, James, thanks for being here. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me, Dave. Great. So I like to start everything with the same question. Uh, and it's very important you answer. This is the most important question of the entire con uh, show today. When you think of the term artificial intelligence, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Can I get you to repeat the question? You st the audio cut out as you asked. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. This is a great start. This is like the technology start of all starts. Absolutely. I believe what you asked is what comes to mind when I hear the term artificial intelligence. Yes. First thing that comes to mind, Terminator 2. <laughs> the Very close behind that, though, is um, the idea that, especially as we po approach um, artificial general intelligence, that we are going to find a new set of tools emerging mm -hmm. that will change the landscape of business and our lives personally. Wow, that's it's that's... my it's my current Roman Empire. It's my yeah. it's like this is all this is what I'm thinking about right now. And I know that's a weird for a, a bakery guy to talk about, <laughs> but this is this is where I spend my thought cycles. I, I spend a lot of time talking about AI. So no, it's 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 good. I, I like asking that question because it is it it's every answer has been different minus the Terminator one. Like we always it always starts with, with like Terminator or Robocop. And then there's a second part, though. So I always like that with the second half. Is. I'm, I'm the same way. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Of course. Of course it's AI. Right. Um, so I want to talk to you today about your bakery. So you're on a bakery cafe uh, with your partner. And together, you guys have this great thing. So Shea Angela is this fantastic bakery that I was there in the early days when you guys were part of like a community kitchen. And you were like yeah. small. I drove past and you guys were putting everything away and you were very nice to give us a nice big good for me and my, at that point, only one child. And I've mm -hmm. gone over there uh, often enough and I see you've got the whole bakery cafe. You've got this much larger kitchen. Like it is a, I would call it a, not a community kitchen that you have to store in a closet, but rather this, an actual kitchen with a full on thing. You've got events happening. And this is the interesting thing is that you are like that great story about a small business owner rising from and, I, and these are my words from nothing to this thing this 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 I, I wouldn't call it an empire yet but it's it's getting there you know it's it's, it's a huge it's maybe a huge never change. maybe never yeah. <laughs> it is it is exactly. huge and you're you're right in like in terms of smarting starting small angie kicked things off by renting the global kitchen committing to a table at the farmer's market she spent about 300 dollars that first week and so everything that is here today which is a uh, you know, a, a multi-million dollar operation with 27 employees. We do 50 to 60 catered events um, a month. We do 120,000 cookies a year. We go through 7,000 pounds of butter a year. Like there's, there's, there's some scale to what we're doing now for sure. But she started at a farmer's market table. And the, the story of, you know, there's a lot of argument over what AI is. Yep. Okay. But I, I would, I would say that AI is, is just, okay. Like the, the terms are literally artificial intelligence. If I was making a choice and I was going to act in a certain way and I can make the computer do that for me, that is a basic form of AI. 
that is even if it's like something that's just a small piece that of of automation or of of quality control or of any of those things those are just a small piece of ai and some some of that comes in to play um when when we're talking about how we got to be bigger than where we are um in you know, in the early days of the bakery, I wasn't spending very much time here at all. Angie was um, obviously the one driving everything. It is Shay Angela. It's her namesake on the door. <laughs> and um, it, by 2021, so she she started in 2017. In 2021, I, you know, quote unquote, retired from the IT world and uh, came to join Shay Angela full time. So I, today, in today's world, I'm the CTO and uh, lead taste tester and um <laughs> we we have a just a, a wonderful thing here in our community and you're right yeah all kinds of events from uh taylor swift impersonators uh doing shows on saturday night and we bring in musicians from all over the world to do like nine course dinners and oh, um awesome. at like culinary concerts and then just like the simple daily things like cookies and pastries and quiche and pie and all of those things so it, it's come a long way and we attribute a lot of it to the work that we've invested in in it as well as angie's incredible baking and the team that she has um i call them the digital to analog converters here <laughs> Fantastic. So we we collect the things digitally yeah. and then they turn it into stuff that you can put in your belly so. perfect and uh as a as a uh personal per, as someone who's can verify i can verify that it is amazing that food i just i uh, tasty. <laughs> absolutely have to get out there again this spring to be like oh, i gotta go i gotta go get a pizza but i'm gonna take three hours to drive out there um <laughs> But so I want so so you have this background in IT and that's we know each other from that that world back then and and you know we've, we've maintained our friendship through those years, yeah. Um, but I want to understand like so that's a massive change in it, like a massive amount of growth from like 2017 to where we are to 2023, and why like where does AI fit into your world now? Because like and the reason I ask this and I want to kind of frame this is people talk about AI right now. It's got a lot of hype, you know, large chat GPT and the large language models, but AI in general has got a lot of hotness right now. And there's a lot of discussion about how it's going to change everything. It'll s solve business. It'll remove employees. It'll, whatever you want to do, like it'll replace the human out of it. And I don't subscribe to that personally, but from someone who's not, you're not a Microsoft, you're not a trillion dollar company, but where does AI fit into your world uh, at Shea Angela? So, you know, in, in terms of like, just kind of going back to some of those earlier points, David, I, I think like what, what we look at where our opportunity is and our place for us as a business, we frame ourselves as serving the community. And the way that we do that is that Angie and I serve our employees. Uh, those are the most important people to us. Those are our customers. Um, subsequent to that, we support our vendors mm -hmm. and by supporting our vendors and supporting our staff we're able to in turn produce something that is relevant for outwards in our community mm -hmm. so when we're looking to invest in it and we're looking at you know how ai is going to fit into our community it falls into those types of things so huh we've had some failures with AI, we've had some interesting journeys with it, and then we find, found some smaller places where AI starts to fit in. And as a business owner, our constant struggle, our constant daily journey is figuring out where AI is going to fit in our story, because it's going to be there. I think it was Sam Waldman that said something along the lines of lawyers and doctors who use AI are going to replace lawyers and doctors, right? right. So it's it's it comes into the same thing. Like if if a restaurant or a bakery is not using AI in some way, then, then what is like what is going to happen to you? So, um, having a background in IT has helped, and previous work in in AI um, has really helped me kind of see a little bit better, maybe, or even understand the conversation, or have a little bit of a head start in terms of that. And it's exciting because now there's all kinds of people that are coming forward with way deeper minds, and they're starting to hyper focus in certain areas and start to apply AI, AI in those things. You know, we're we're a small business, yep. less than two million in revenue, less than fifty employees, and th this is this is going to be a painful time 
I think, for small business, because most small businesses do not have the knowledge or the funding to do things that the major chains are going to be able to do with AI, to take advantage of some of the early systems that are quite expensive and cost prohibitive to adopt. So we have to be pretty selective in, in the tools that we take on. And a lot of the AI that's addressing the industry right now is to address food production at scale. And that is the antithesis to who we are, because right. we are local first, serving our vendors, um, putting from scratch fresh baked things daily out on our shelves and hoping that we sell out because anything at the end of the day is going to get donated. So we're we're not in that whole let's fill a semi-trailer full of bread kind of mentality where a lot of the early AI systems and AI work is is being applied in the restaurant industry. So for us right now, it's really trying to, and we, we can dive into any of those pieces, but for us, for us right now, it's trying to find the right fits um, learn from our mistakes in AI and then try and build a future where AI is serving us and our customers and our, our staff and our community really well. So that, that reflects a lot of what my research was showing. So I sent you some notes about like, I'm like I can't find anything about, uh, about AI in, and like other than mass quantities, like, like let, if you run yeah. a, a bakery, that is a factory really that makes, that happens to make bread, you know, it's a giant factory though. Like here's the AI yeah. element. I'm like, well, that's not. Like I, like I don't even want that bread in my house. No, generally. like we buy from small from small business on purpose because we want that quality and we want that. We know right. that James made the James and Angie made the bread. Like we know them. Right. You know that kind of thing. There's something they're, about that rather than generic machine six made it for me. <laughs> exactly, and there there is there is something to be said. There's um there's a, a demographic and there's um food conscious and community conscious yep. people who know and embrace and want to support hyper local in in that way. Chris and Larissa, literally 18 minutes from our bakery, are the ones who grow the grain using regenerative sustainable processes. They they harvest it, they mill it on site, and they bring us bags of flour to our bakery. Oh. We know our farmer. Yeah. We use their flour to make bread. We think that people should know their baker. You know your dentist, you know your doctor, you know your lawyer, you should know your farmer, you should know your baker. So we, we subscribe to that. That said, there are these other um, industries or this other industry. I, I look at us as kind of a different industry than the mass food production for, for a lot of reasons. But um, you know, $2 loaf bread, that serves a purpose in our community. And there's, there's folks who, who really need that. And it's a vehicle for for giving nutrition to a large body of, of folks. I wish that there were better regulations around what goes into those foods in terms of preservatives and exposure to chemicals and things like that. But that's a whole different podcast, <laughs> Dave. Um, I, however, may, maybe, maybe as some of those regulations start to filter in, mm -hmm. AI is going to help those manufacturers find ways to better serve the the demographic of, of folks in our in our country and across the world who aren't able to pay the bigger dollars. Maybe that can help drive costs down, not namely or um, for the sole purpose of the the profit of the investors and the shareholders while forsaking those who are actually eating the product, maybe there's some good things that can happen there. And I'm excited about those things for sure. That's it. So, yeah. Okay. So I want to, I'm going to put a pin in that for a little bit. I think we're going to, we might come back yeah. to it in a bit, but I want to talk a little bit about, you specifically highlighted like how it's going to be hard for small businesses in general to find AI in there. Like that's because it is a thing that's disrupting everything. It's a mess. And that's every industry. Like we're seeing it in IT uh, we're seeing it, especially in IT, but we're seeing it. I, you know, I look at the game development scene a lot. The game development scene has huge number of layoffs and stuff like that. And a lot of it is because they think AI will replace many of these people. That's a whole other mm. sport and not what we're going to talk about here. But when it comes about yeah. to, to small businesses, though, you said you're yeah. trying to find your way with it, which is which is great. That's sure. that's kind of the ideal for even just an individual like myself working in an office. I've got to learn how to, AI is going to change how I do my job. But I'm curious if you'd be willing to share some of the like the successes and some of the failures about what you've tried with AI with Shay Angela. Sure. Well, let's um, let's address the the point of the small business piece first, and then I'll, I'll then I'll talk about some of yep. the stories. But so let's let's look at a restaurant. A lot of restaurants in Canada um, are less than 20 employees. They make 700 
thousand to a million dollars in revenue a year and a good restaurant will make between four to six percent profit so let's just say let's just say that you've got a good profit and you're doing a million dollars okay so you're talking about at the end of the year sixty thousand dollars that you can either withdraw from the company or reinvest in the company when you've got 60 grand and you're looking at ai systems that cost three four five thousand dollars a year that's all your profit yeah like gone so while it's nothing for a four million dollar restaurant maybe it's not nothing but a four million dollar restaurant that's part of a chain with a hundred locations the investment's going to happen at head office one time and that technology is going to be able to propagate through yeah. but when from a small business perspective nobody else is right in my menu like i mean we we need to we need to do the menu yeah. so where where have we found it okay so generative ai is what everybody's talking about right now and there's some interesting things that are happening there um i we started embracing generative ai like literally chat gp3 like i remember when they released chat gpt to the the broader public yeah. my wife and i were actually on holiday in in hawaii it was uh our <laughs> Our, our 20th anniversary was in 2020, but it was postponed until November ah, of- Perfect, yeah. Uh, so, so we, we that was our, our 20th anniversary trip. And I was I was lying in, in, we'd slept in, it was like maybe eight o'clock in the morning. That's a sleep in for a baker, by the way. It was eight <laughs> o'clock. And I, I saw the news and I went into the, the, I signed up for it right away. And I just said, you know, give me a menu for the next week that is um that has bread in every every meal yep right and it it just output this table and i'm like are you kidding me okay <laughs> so that's that's really cool so i dove in right away and i started exploring it and now this is this is a tool that i think that you need to develop some skills in prompt engineering in, mm -hmm. in order to understand how this stuff works. And there's tutorials out there and there's all kinds of endless stuff or whatever. There's also just a lot of experimentation. But one of the first things I did, and I still have this chat going inside of, uh, of um, the engine at ChatGPT, is I have a conversation that's just called uh, social media voice. OK, and what I did is I said, here are 10 examples of uh, of me posting social media. Th this is how I write my social media. Um, now, I, and I'm going to call that voice James. You are now acting in the voice of James, and I would like you to write a, uh, 10 posts on the history of baguettes. And I don't have to tell it anything about baguettes. It knows what baguettes are. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, there's 10 posts for me that are here written for my, like exactly in my industry, exactly in my craft. I've already done 10 posts on social media. It's not hard for me to go and get 10 of my favorites and put it in there yep. and then say, ask me any questions that you have for clarification. And it's like, okay, so it, it looks like you use this tone and you, you use some emojis. Is it okay if I do those things? I said, absolutely. And then it went off and it just created these posts. Now for someone who, you know, for the last uh, nearly seven years, we've been, we've been doing social media, you know, we've done, I think we're closing in on like 8,000 posts or something like that. We've done a lot of social media. And as a result, um, it gets hard to try and feel like we're doing something original. And a lot of times we're not, but it's so hard to start with a blank page. So the first area where we've really seen some of the newer stuff with AI find us some successes is just giving something to start with. I can pop back, back into that social media voice thread that I've got and I can say, hey, we're doing six inch chocolate, chocolate, chocolate cakes today. I, that was not stuttering. We have chocolate cake with chocolate ganache and chocolate buttercream. So we call it our chocolate, chocolate, chocolate cake. And I said, here's the product info, copied and paste. Um, you know, in today's world, we can actually even say this is the web page where this product is at. And as a small business owner, it takes me about 30 seconds for it to go in and generate using my voice, my phrasing, my sentence structure. Um, the level of emoji-ness that is in the social media <laughs> post. And it gives me something to start with. It's not always perfect, but holy crap, copy and paste the product in, write me a post on this, and it's done. It gives me something to start with, and then I can shape it from there. So that's, that's a, a you know, just on the, on the marketing side of things, it gives me a copywriter. Um, and, and, you know, like some people are going to argue, okay, this is an area where it's taking away jobs, but I disagree. We're never going to be big enough for us to hire a copywriter. Yeah. And I have other things that I need to do to serve my my three most important things, my my staff, my vendors and my customers. And if I'm going to spend time on those, then I can't spend as much time as I would like to on marketing. Um, it gets you past roadblocks and all those kinds of things. So that's that's an area where we found uh, a bit of a win. 
um, we 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 tried to take some earlier stuff on and found that the investment really wasn't worth it. So, uh, um, what do you mean by early, service, say, wait, Clarify what do you mean by earlier sure. stuff? Earlier on in our big shop journey, okay. machine learning was released as a big tenant. Yeah, the whole thing inside Azure, and it was like literally like you could just give it sales data and give it your pro production information, and then say predict for me how this would be. So for about a year, I was collecting data on weather, you know, like basically dates. So day of week implied um, the the weather, if there were any events, I was capturing sales information and then our sale dates, which were like um, Angie, when she was at the farmer's market was just operating on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And the thing was, is in I, I'd spent all this time trying to do predictions on what we should produce. What are, okay. what are our sales going to be? And at the time, Angie was literally selling out every day. Like, like literally she could not bake enough stuff. In fact, she would have her pre-orders and we would take the pre-order information. We would take the sales information. We would even take the fact that she had a little bit of extra time. So she created extra batches of food. I'd, put, I'd record that in there as well. And then no matter what I did for it to say on this date with these upcoming events, here's the upcoming stuff, what should we produce? And it was like 999,000 cookies. <laughs> like <it> was... <laughs> That's, so that's a lot of cookies. <laughs> that's a lot of cookies. Um, but when you sell everything you make, it doesn't really lend to the intelligence there. So here, here's, and there's other things that we can do. For example, I know now looking back on it, the smarter thing to do would also to be to put in production thresholds. Um, I can only bake this many of this thing. Yeah. Like, you know, Angie only had the capacity to do 40 loaves of bread. There's, she's got, there's, it's got no business telling her to do 400,000 loaves of sourdough because right. it's never going to happen. So having production limits on those things would actually help. And then to maybe take it one step further and say, optimize based on these costs, on these food costs, how, what, which, what should we produce given the weather forecast for the next week? And maybe that's where we could have started to do some, some better things. However, there's just so many variables that by the time you chase down whether or not there's a hockey game, if it's an afternoon game or a, or a an evening game, whether or not egg days or the winter fair is in town, whether or not there it's a, a good weekend and the kind of weekend you're like, if, if it's a really nice temperature in February, not everybody's going to the lake, but in May they are in July, this is a ghost town. So there's all this, unless there's bad weather, but if there's something, you know, like a rodeo in Verdon, then like, there's all these other factors yeah. and the amount of time that you would need to ingest that data because those things are not automated. It makes machine learning for the purposes of production predictions it makes it very very difficult and time consuming and very cost ineffective uh, another thing that we did is when microsoft released their first chat framework for their chat we had um uh lewis the integrated learning the language interpretation services um so this is just for uh, the audience this is like this is pre chat gpt like this did correct that, that's that yes. so yeah this is the language models right. that would recognize speech and you could but it didn't do the generative text of like you know, let me, write me my posts and write me write me a novel about cats and it's like i got this no so, lewis wasn't that no lewis wasn't that lewis was more like um here are the frequently asked questions yeah. that people ask me and now you connect this little um, model to your Facebook messenger mm -hmm. and then you let them do things. Now I took that and I went to the nth degree and I, I, I started doing things like, okay, um, I, I, there wasn't really good guidance on it. So I was making a lot of mistakes that people don't have to make anymore because, you know, in, in the earlier development of bots, people were trying to have that bot be so intelligent that it could answer any incoming question. Really what you need is a guided experience, right? I'm bake bot. What would you like to do? Place an order, see our store hours, or um, check on my order status, right? And it should be buttons that direct the user into things that the bot can actually do. So we, I did not do that. <laughs> and what I did is I connected it to our sales history, and I connected it to our customer database, and I connected it to our production calendar, and I tried to make it as smart as I could. And um, then I, I hooked it up and I had it running anytime that I wasn't on social media. So uh, it was uh, basically like outside of 
the our regular hours. I, okay. I wanted to, you know, this is like the human life thing where AI is supposed to help us, right? Yep. I don't want to be answering social media questions. And if a bot can do it to the best of its abilities outside of regular hours, yep. then I get to live my life with my family and everyone's happy. Yep. So um, I, I trained it on these things and I kind of like unleashed it. <laughs> and um it it did okay and we we announced it to our friendlies so that they could try it out and there were some good experiences and then there were some not good experiences there was one poor lady who was just trying to order a banana cream pie and so uh she jumped on and it said um hi welcome to Shangela. my name is bakebot how can i help you and then she said something that bakebot didn't understand it actually crashed the chat bot and it said, sorry, I didn't understand. And then she said, I, well, I just, I like, I guess I'm just wondering the next time you're going to have banana cream pies. And it goes, hi, welcome to Shangela. I'm Bakebot. How can I help you? And she's like, can I order a pie? And he goes, you know, I, it looks like you're trying to place an order. And she says, I am. And then she gives a smiley face. For some reason, Bakebot thought that the smiley face was her swearing. And he said, you don't need to use that kind of language. We're all friends here. And it and then he crashed after that. And she goes, what? Because she didn't know she like, and then it, because it crashed again, it said, I'm sorry. And she goes, what? And he goes, hi, welcome to Shea Angela. My name is Bakebot. How can I help? And it's just like, oh my gosh, this is, this is not going as planned. Now I had mirroring on. So all of the things that were being said back and forth yeah. were popping up, like, you know, through my Android and showing up on the dashboard in the car as we're driving. And I'm like, I, what do I do? How do I shut off Bakebot? We're there. So we're like, I think it, this, for this one, we were like halfway between Carberry and Portage La Prairie, which are in Manitoba for people who aren't of the region. Region, and there's like not really good data. So I've got my laptop out, I'm pairing to my phone and I'm trying to disable BakeBot. It just was not good. Um, so it was, it was not battle tested, it was not ready and it was not generally intelligent enough to handle. And so I, I sunk a lot of time in trying to make that work and try and correct it. And we just had to abandon it because, um, you know, over the course of, of six months, there was another bot framework that was released and so on and so forth. And I also don't think that I was taking the right approach, trying to make it the conversational yeah. thing. That's it's, it's not the right, the, not the right way to do it. Um, more recently I have created a custom GPT. Um, okay. And um, I call it, I'm using it internally right now. And I actually have um written about four pages like just a word document of things that i need to make sure i talk about and branching conditions and all of those kinds of things so now when i'm taking a catering order say we've got a wedding with 300 people mm -hmm. 300 guests at it and they need to accommodate for certain um, dietary concerns and there's allergies and all of those things because i've taken all of that information about all of the things yeah. that we need to ask in order to have a successful event. And I've put it inside of a custom GPT. When I'm talking to the customer, I just start up a new um, cake bot and, and I get that our, I say, I'm, I'm doing a catering order and it starts asking how many guests. And so as I get information list. from the customer, I'm going through and then I, and at, every time I put some more data in, it says, remember to ask these things. And so if the, if the customer picks two mains that are proteins, for example, um, are like a maple mustard chicken and an Italian meatball, then the, the bake bot's gonna say, um, you said that you had vegetarians, but you don't have a vegetarian main. So you should su suggest ratatouille and- um, There's uh, other that, options. So it's, it keeps, it, it helps me in those kinds of things. Now it's not terribly important for me. It has helped me a couple of times. I forgot to ask about cutlery and compostable plates and things like that. But what it's really going to empower is when I hand this off to our front yeah. house manager and she's going to be taking those catering orders, it's going to give her just a next level of support where she doesn't have to run to James because I've already done the mind dump on all of the things that I know about catering. That's interesting. So I want to like, that's our, first of all, that's a lot of great stories. Like that's, that's some good stuff there. Um, We're scratching the surface. Let's go. That's, <laughs> that's awesome, man. <laughs> But I, wanna, I, I, wanna... I would say this. I would say this though. Go ahead. For for small businesses, just really kind of to close that loop there, David. I, the the thing that I try to do with AI, be it something that's official, built built on a toolkit or a framework, or hosted in Azure, or just something that I write using scripts or C sharp myself. Yeah. What I need that to do 
is just what would our business do to serve our staff, our vendors, or our customers? It's back to that. And I just try, and it's back to that foundation. And can I do it in a way that improves the experience for all of us so that we can focus on the thing that we're really concerned about, which is making great food? I want to dive into the success aspect of the of the GPTs, and and also, sorry, let's take a step back. What, like when you look at what you did, so you talked about three major flavors of AI. You talked about pre GPT, like chatbots and like like uh, natural language. Uh, uh, well, I can't, NLP. The lang- inter- yeah, like, yeah, yeah, interpretation, NLP. So natural language processing. Yeah. There we go. Machine learning, which is like the heart of all AI, which is so these these trends. And I and I remember these trends bubbling up and being like, just dump all your data in there, and out comes predictive analysis, and it's just so right. fancy. And then you know you 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 tried it, and it's like, well, okay, okay, great. Like where, and then Lewis is the same sort of thing. Like it could go so far. I did some experiments with, with Lewis, with the, with my day job too, at the university, not Lewis specifically, but the IBM equivalent to Watson. And it didn't pick up in the same way. Like it had purpose, but it, again, we hit, we hit those snags just in testing. We're like, well, no, you can't send a student off to there. Like this is like, where does this building? And then it would just be like, bleh, like, you know, left turn. And you're like, you're, you're lost. What do you think is the difference though, between like, chat GPT and like the large language models versus those two things, like in terms of adoption, because those two, like, I agree, like those first two you listed are, they were challenging to adopt, but LLMs for some reason, like people can just pick them up and they're just like, they instantly see value. And, but the value I keep getting people to tell me about is completely, it's very specific to you. You just told me the bakery story for that a small business owner yeah. and a bakery yeah. story on LLMs. I look at it at writing governance docu- documentation. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, like to side to kind of go to the side a little bit there. I also sit on a number of boards like related to poverty and social okay. wellness in our community and um, serving out of the, you know, Samaritan House and things like that. And what um, we have a lot of grant applications, right? Oh. Well, oh, my gosh, th- this is transformative. And I just want to go to like every nonprofit and say, you you need to understand this is a skill that you need going forward because I can take the requirements for a grant as given from a government and I can literally, and I've done this. I know that you can do this because I've done this. I can take those requirements and I can, I can say, Hey, chat GPT, here's this PDF. I want you to analyze. Yeah. Now here's the website for our nonprofit organization. Write me a grant that's going to get approved. You like, this is, this is a thing that you, you absolutely, absolutely need to do. You're wondering what the difference is in adoption and why some of these things are not working. And I would I would largely say it's a, it's a matter of the evolution of the tools. Okay. okay? W- what did you have to do in order to, to embark on those early machine learning um, quests, those side quests for your business? You had to know, you had to be able to collect and export vast amounts yep. of data. You needed to be able to transform that data into formats that the learning system understood. You needed to have a grasp enough of how to navigate the very, at the start at least, yep. rudimentary tools that you had to ingest that data. And then you had to come up with a script that would transform or extract the data in a meaningful way for your business. And all of those things are hard for someone who doesn't have experience. I open up chat.openai.com or I can't remember what it is. Chat.openai.ai, whatever. I just, I type chat in my browser and it works. <laughs> and then it just I shows up. I don't know, up. I'm not good at computers. <laughs> um, but uh, it, you, you just hit that interface and it gives you examples of what to type in there. Yeah. And you can just keep poking it and poking it and poking it. And if you don't like something, you can you can talk to it like you're a teacher evaluating a student's work, but the student is just so quick at turning the work around and you can keep forcing them to make it better and better. So the the tool itself starts to serve the user yeah. rather than the user being a daemon for the 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 utilities for the tool yeah. having to go and fetch and construct things for the system to use and build um the outputs that are expected it's now this thing that's like coaching the user along yeah. and this is why i think the adoption is so wild plus it's kind of cool to sit there and say 
um, you know, have a picture of yourself and go into like a generative AI thing where you say, make me an astronaut eating a sandwich on a cafe on Mars and to see something cool like that. Or, you know, put me outside the space shuttle as part of the mission, mission specialist teams ready to board the, the uh, a rocket. You know, like it's you can do cool things and and you can do it in plain English and people really get it. It, you know, and I figure, I guess that, that that's a good thing to do. Like, it's the barrier to entry, and that's what I'm here. Like, because you're like you and I both have IT backgrounds. Like, we're those technical people that people brought on to translate that to do those kinds of crazy hard things. You think about a small business owner, like you, you, it's a very different perspective. Where it's, rather than focusing on the tech, like using Shangela as the example, like you're focused on you know supporting your vendors, supporting your community, and delivering great food, like producing a great product. Yeah, IT is not in that foundational anything. And no. when you think about LLMs, it's just communication, right? It just came out like, here's, we just dropped this in. Can you, can you use words? Because if you can, this tool's for you. That is the barrier to entry yeah. is, is just exactly. being able to communicate. So that's really powerful. Exactly. Um, I want to drive into the bit of more of the future side of things. And like where you see this going. Cause I love the social media bit, like the marketing stuff. Cause I just for folks mm. watching, like I, I I don't go on Instagram as much as I did, but like I the Instagram for Shay Angela was always very entertaining. Like there was a certain point I didn't even know I knew parts of your staff before I had ever gone to the restaurant. Um there's characters at that point, and it was very sure. good. I know James and I know Angie, but like at the same time, like I got to know other people and yeah. <laughs> got a kick out of that. Like it was just a great story. Mm hmm um, but like, where do you see this going? Like, what other areas are you kind of looking at, whether it's with, you know, the grant applications, but like, where do you see this kind of leading to in terms of like, is there any sort of like, are you going to look at revisiting that chat bot again with something with the generative AI or, I, I, uh, you know, like I know that open table has their own um, GPT built in Will like Shay Angela get their own public GPT that I can chat with Bing and be like, I could use some bagels right now or whatever. I, I could use some croissant right now. And they're like, Shangela is just down the road. Broop, here you go. Or like something like that. Or like, what right, do you think? Right. So, um, you know, I think we, we have a lot of tools and technology that we take for granted. Nobody, when they say, I'm going to start my, I'm starting my new business doing X, Y, Z. It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. Nobody says I'm going to get a really cool keyboard and mouse. <laughs> like <laughs> it, that. We, we don't do that. We know that there's a computer in the play and we're going to get something that meets the needs and we're going to, you know, if we're reporting to, uh, you know, especially outside of IT, if you're reporting to a board or, or somebody you need to be accountable for the money you spend, you're going to try and get something that's reasonable. Technology that serves its purpose really well for businesses of all size fades into the background. And, you know, I think Steve Jobs used to say something like, um, you know, if it's done right, then technology is like magic, right? Like people don't, I, I can't remember the exact quotes. Yeah. Um, so just maybe just quote me instead, just say James Chambers said that <laughs> Perfect, really good technology is like magic, James Chambers. <laughs> um, but if, if, if that's the case, you know, what we're going to see in the restaurant industry is things like, you know, it's exciting right now for open table to announce that they've got these new AI features. The reality is no one's going to care about it. Nobody's going to care yeah. in three years, whether or not Shay Angela has AI. It's just going to be there in the background. And so we use things like Square and Square has marketing programs and the marketing programs have AI and they can detect when customers have it. You know, some of this stuff has been around in various forms. We're starting to call it AI or label it AI. Yeah. But it's, again, just those little things that humans would have done, but computers are more efficient at. And when you aggregate all of those things and you combine those with LLMs and it fades into the background. Yeah. That's, that's, I think, where we're going to start to see a lot of the really cool things happening. I don't think it's going to be AI front and center changing lives and, and destroying jobs. I think it's going to enable us to, you know, humans, humans are resilient and we're smart and we, we, we will find things to do. Yeah. I kid you not, how, however much work you take away from us or games or play or whatever, we will find things to do to fill the space. Yeah. The optimist in me hopes that those are productive community building <laughs> things. Um, we won't talk about the pessimist in me. However, um, good actors using good tools that feel like magic is going to be something that I think is going to be um, a story when, you know, 20 years from now, we look back and say, well, what the heck happened in the mid to late 2020s 
we're going to be like, oh, yeah, that's, I guess, when really AI started to pick up. We, we talk about it now, right? Like what happened in the 90s, right? Well, oh, that's when when the internet really started to pick up. What what happened in, you know, to, to real estate in the 60s and 70s? Oh, that's when they really started tracking home price indexing and inflation yep. and consumer confidence. There's always these things where you go and, you, oh, that's when that happened. That's when that, well, those things are just in the background for us now, be it technology or business trends or whatever, that are just part of our daily fabric. Yep. Um, the AI is going to be just another one of those things. So, so uh, I, I like to have the awareness of it. I like to have a good grip on it. I like that I've got my my IT background so I can understand some of the things that are happening. But but dang, you know, um, it's it's not going to be as powerful or as game changing as some of the the pro AI pundits are are claiming it's going to be in the near term. It's not going to be there until it doesn't feel like we're using a branded AI experience. It's just a tool in the background. Yeah. Of course, I'm starting a business. I'm going to buy a desk and a keyboard and a mouse. And of course, I'm starting a new bakery in 2032. And I'm going to be using the AI systems to help me figure out what I need to order for my cakes and pastries and bread specialties next week. Like those will those will just be of courses. Yeah that we're not really spending time thinking about. Okay. You know, honestly, I think that's a really good way to, to wrap this up. Actually, that was a really good, uh, good way to tie it up. There's a lot, I got a lot to digest there. I think that's, you really helped kind of clarify how this helps change small business. And I think that's a, that's an area of, of, of something that I've always wanted to see. Cause I see the big tech companies talking about AI, this and AI that, and it's, I see it. Um, but that that talk is starting to dwindle down and I'm trying to find that change. And I'm always wondering how it changes actual people, not how Sachin Nadella views AI inside of my inside of their their employer staff of 100,000 or whatever it is they've got now. You know, like I just yeah. I yeah. want to say, like, well, how does it change my life? How does it change your life? And I think you did a really good job of representing small business here and giving some good insights in that. So thanks yeah, for thank doing you. that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, before we shout, before we close out, do you have anything you want to shout out, uh, or any social media plugs, or any events, or anything you want to want to share? Tell uh, tell the audience hey, to go to. Sure. Do you know what? if you just look for Shea Angela Brandon on any of the social media platforms, you'll find us. Um, and if you wherever you are on planet Earth, if you happen to see this and you find yourself 280 kilometers away from Winnipeg International Airport, <laughs> um, and you're hungry for some pastry, then I hope you come down and see us. You know what? Hey, hey. hey. I'll say this. If you come by and you're from more than two hours away and you say, I saw you on the podcast, on the Remember the Human podcast, you're going to get a free pastry. I'm going to do that. I'm going to make that happen. <laughs> so come oh. down to Brandon, Manitoba and tell me about this podcast and we're going to hook you up. We're even going to put a pin on the map. We have a world map. We'll put a pin on the map where you came from. Oh, it's beautiful. Well, you heard it here, you heard it here first, everybody. Uh, James, response. <laughs> thank you so much for being on the show, man. This was this was a great this was a great conversation it was a lot of fun um, always great to visit with you dave it's always great so take care cheers on today's episode of remember the human we tried to answer the question how will ai impact small businesses now today's conversation with james we focused in a lot more on bakeries and cafes and service oriented industries because well james knows that world but it's also a very relatable example Right? I think everyone has their own local spot they've gone to in the past, whether they go to it now or they did before. But those places were charming. They have a special human touch to them. And I wanted to see, can AI infiltrate that? Is that part of that future vision for these places? The short answer is yes. Now, how will it impact them? Well, ideally, if in a small business picks up AI as a tool set, it'll help them focus in on what makes them special. Maybe not necessarily scaling their product or scaling themselves up or anything like that, but rather think of James's example about planning the menu or writing tweets for marketing purposes, right? He can spend less time doing marketing and meal planning with a, with a, with a blank page and focus in on other projects that need to be handled, whether it's more catering orders or more whatever. James now has the capacity to do more of that stuff. And as AI develops, especially those LLMs, you can see there's more stuff he can hand off to it so he can have more time to do the other things. The other great example I thought was fascinating was the training of an AI where for catering orders, he's trained a GPT to help him plan out a menu, ask the right questions, make sure things aren't forgotten. And he's trained up this GPT. So not only does it help him just be better at his job and again, save him some time, 
But when he hands that job off completely, there's a reinforced AI assistant that he's trained personally that can be handed off to one or 10 different people that are taking on that role inside of the business. So as Shea Angela grows, he can move on to the next thing and develop that next area of the business and not have to worry about the details and, and limits of doing knowledge transfer between two humans. That AI is there to assist them. Sure, James can step in and help out as he needs, but the AI is there to reinforce that learning. And then as the staff pick that up, they can, there's no barrier to entry, right? They can use a tablet. They can use, a, they can use their voice. They can use a keyboard. All of these pieces are there to help assist them and do it consistently and get better at what they need to do. And again, save time, less mistakes, all of it works in their favor so the business can focus in on what makes them special. But on the other side of the coin, what about the small businesses that choose not to adopt it? It's not like they won't succeed, but they're going to have stronger competition and you're going to see more people getting involved with AI, having more opportunity to focus in what makes them special. Now, if you have all the time in the world, that's great. And I'm not going to fault you. I know that entrepreneurship is a large, very, very time consuming uh, job. But at the end of the day, if you can get some of that time back, why wouldn't you? And you could argue that, yes, James even pointed out with the copywriter aspect. Is it replacing jobs? Technically speaking, yes, but a small business owner doesn't have the, the capacity financially to hire a staff of marketers and a whole army of catering people that are trained up and a training person to be that way. They can't just start there. They're not a big box giant chain. They are a small business by definition. And what makes them special is that they're growing where they can and to refine those things and get better at the things that make them special. And if AI can make that happen, I think that's a better thing for small businesses and ideally better for me as the consumer, right? Think If I think about that, I'll go to those stores and they'll be able to focus in on what makes them special, making me want to go there more, right? Maybe they'll expand. Maybe they'll get some better things going on. Maybe they'll be able to develop new products. I don't know. And I'll be able to consume those products too, right? Everyone loves pastries. Everyone loves those coffees or whatever. So I really like that idea that they can focus in on what makes them special more so than what, than, than those other standardized business activities that need to be done, but again, are just a time sink at the end of the day that take away from what makes them special in the first place. And with that, we're going to call it a wrap. So thanks everyone for listening and have yourself a great day and or evening. Take care. Subscribe, follow, and learn more at www.rememberthehuman.ai.